everybody, it's Dr. Joe and cool Remy. And Remy says, don't crack your back. Do these seven stretches and exercises instead. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So I want to start off by saying that cracking your back or technically what we call it is either manipulating your back or adjusting your back. There's nothing wrong with that when it's appropriate. So sometimes I get a little worried when people say, oh, I'm just cracking my back and I don't know what's wrong with it, but it feels good or it kind of hurts when it happens because there are some diagnoses that if you have that, you should not be cracking your back. And there's ways you can do stretches and exercises that will actually get that adjustment that you need. You might not feel that wonderful pop, but you might. So this is a great alternative, especially if you're not exactly what sure what is going on in your back, if you're not sure about that, you really don't wanna just be cracking your back or adjusting or manipulating your back. So I'm just gonna start off with some pretty simple stuff lying down, but you can do this on your bed or on the couch. You don't have to do it on the floor if you can't get down on the floor comfortably. So the first one is really just a simple bridge. And what bridging will do, will it'll kind of loosen up the back, the hip area. And so if you've got something that's tight or maybe slightly out of alignment, this will help get it back into alignment. So with bridges, if you've seen my videos before, you want you know your knees to be about hip width apart. You want your feet to be on the floor. And you really want to lift up in a slow controlled motion, almost like you're rolling your back up and down. You don't want to just come up and down because that's using momentum and then that's not getting that segment movement, which is what you're looking for to kind of get that adjustment or that manipulation in there. So you're just rolling up as high as you comfortably can. If you can't get this high, that's okay. And then slowly rolling back down. If you feel like your hamstrings are cramping a little bit, if you bring your feet a little bit closer to you, that takes the hamstrings out a little bit more, makes you work your glutes a little bit more. So if you feel like your hamstrings are trying to cramp, bring your, your heels a little bit closer to your bottom. So I would just start off with maybe 10 of those. You can do a couple sets of 10 um, a couple times throughout the day. So then the next one is just gonna be a simple knee to chest stretch. And again, this is just kind of stretching out the back. Sometimes you don't need that you know, pop or that manipulation. You just need to get everything stretched out so it'll loosen up. So a simple knee to chest stretch is just what it sounds like. You're bringing your knee up to your chest. I like keeping my knee bent. Some people like stretching it out. It'll also help stretch out your hip flexors if you do that. But if you're first starting off, this will help kind of support your back a little bit. You're just gonna take both hands. You can go on the front of your knee. If you have some knee issues, you can go underneath your knee and just pull it towards your chest as far as you comfortably can. Make sure you're doing some nice deep breathing while you're doing this. Sometimes once you get in that position, if you take a nice deep breath, you might actually get a little bit of that pop or that adjustment in your back. This is gonna be a full 30 second hold, and then you're gonna do that three times on each side. I like to alternate back and forth, but you don't have to. If you wanna do them all three on one side and then switch, you can. But again, make sure you're doing that nice deep breathing to help relax those muscles and to help adjust your spine a little bit. So then the next one is just gonna be what we would call a trunk rotation. You can do this two different ways. If you're first starting out, you might want to do this one first because it's a little bit less stress on your back. So keeping your knees and your feet together, you're just going to roll gently to one side. Try and keep your shoulder blades on the floor or the bed, but you can let your hip come up off of the floor or your pelvis. And then just gently roll side to side as far as you comfortably can. Now you can do either way, you can do it a continuous motion or you can come to the spot where you feel a stretch and hold it for about 10 or 15 seconds and then maybe go back and forth about five times. If that's not really getting much of a stretch for you, you can do a bigger trunk rotation stretch where then you're gonna bring one leg down and you're gonna lift the other knee up to the hip and knee being at about 90 degrees. And then you're gonna take your hand and just help gently roll your body over to the side. Now this one, sometimes you actually might get a little bit of a pop or a crack in your back if you're doing it. Don't force it, don't push hard. You're just going into the stretch. So you can do this one where you're holding it for maybe 30 seconds or just go till you get to that spot where you feel that nice stretch. And again, take that nice deep breath. Let it out, go a little bit more. And sometimes again, you might, you might get that little crack or that pop or 
the adjustment or the manipulation. So the next one, especially if you're having maybe some issues in the pelvic area or that SI joint, you can do what we would call a muscle energy technique. Um, but this is also just kind of isometric exercises, which sometimes helps get that adjustment if you need it. I like sometimes just using a roll underneath one leg. Um, you don't have to, but I feel like it gives you a little something you can push into to help. So with this one, Often you might want to know if one side's out of alignment or not, but if you don't have something out of alignment, you're just looking for that adjustment, you can do both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this knee up and I'm going to place my hands just on top of my thigh here. So I'm going to do a motion where I'm pushing up this way, but my hands are going to prevent me from doing it. So I'm pushing up into my hand. At the same time, I'm pushing down into that roll with my knee and kind of squeezing my glute muscles. So just kind of doing that at the same time, pushing up with this one, pushing down with this one. Your, your heel might even come off the floor or the bed a little bit and that's fine. Just hold it for three to five seconds and then relax. I would probably do it three to five times in a row, just depending on how comfortable it is. You don't want it to be painful, but you do want to feel that tension or pressure in there. So again, this one's coming up this way, that one's going down that way, but they're not really going anywhere. You're just activating those muscles to help kind of realign everything. So again, if you don't have a side that's particularly rotated, you can do both sides. So again, bringing this side up, pushing in, going up this way, and then pushing down with that one at the same time. So you're kind of getting that, you know, contraction down that way and then contraction up this way. Holding again for about five seconds, doing that three to five times. So then the same kind of concept, now we're gonna do a hip abduction going out, but it's gonna be isometrically. So just take a belt, um, if you've got kind of a, a yoga strap or something, that'll work. But you want it to be solid. You don't want it to be a resistive band because you don't want it to go anywhere. Again, this is an isometric exercise, which means you're contracting the muscle, but you're not moving the muscle. It doesn't have to be a specific distance apart. You can actually do a little bit, you know, do one here, do one here, do one here. So the distance doesn't matter a whole lot as long as you feel like you're activating the muscles. So this time, I'm pushing out into the belt with both sides to activate those outer muscles. And that helps kind of open up that pelvis a little bit too. So you, again, sometimes people might feel a little crack or a pop with this. So I wouldn't start off with 100% of all your force pushing out. Maybe start off with 30 to 40% and see how you feel. Just pushing out that five seconds or so. And then if it feels okay, each time you can do a little bit more pressure pushing out. So again, maybe three to five times of that. And then you're just going to go in the opposite direction. So now you're going to be squeezing in. You can use a yoga block if you have a yoga block. If you don't have something like that, you can use um, a sports ball, soccer ball, basketball, volleyball. If you don't have anything like that either, you can just fold up a pillow and put it in. But with this one, you do want it to be about hip width apart. So you don't want something super small. You can use your fist in between, but you want you don't want it to be where your knees are so close together. You do want some distance apart. And so now this time you're squeezing into the ball. And so a lot of times with this one, with my patients, and sometimes with myself if I'm out of alignment, this is the one that will give me that pop. So if I'm squeezing in, I might feel a little pop in my pelvis area or even back in the SI joint. And so that's just everything again, trying to adjust or self manipulate yourself. So then the last one is gonna be rolling over onto your tummy. Now this is one that if you're not sure what your diagnosis is, you might not wanna do this because going back into that extension for some things like stenosis or things like that, you probably wouldn't wanna do this. So again, if you're not sure, probably don't wanna do it. If you have something like a, a disc issue, this is okay, but just go to your comfort zone because some people might just have to start off propping up on their elbows. So you can see I've got a little bit of an extension in my back, but it's not a, a big forceful extension. So this one is really just propping up on my elbows for about 30 seconds. Again, if you haven't done this before and your back's pretty sore, you might just want to start off with 10 to 15 seconds and then come back down and relax. You don't want it to be painful. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of uncomfortableness is okay, but again, you, you don't want it to hurt. So again, if you're not sure what your diagnosis is, you might want to hold off on this one. So there you have it. 
don't crack your back, do these seven stretches and exercises instead. Isn't that right, Miss Remy? So if you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up there. And don't forget to subscribe where? Not, not over there. Over there. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.